Recently, we finished a commission that uh, included a ton of feathers. And some of the viewers wanted to know how to make these. So I'm going to show you how to do that today. Pretty simple method that hopefully is inexpensive and easy to do for you guys. Now, there are a couple of tools out on the web that you can buy that are stamps or punches that allow you to punch some material like um, some aluminum or what whatever you want in the shape of feathers and leaves. Um, the reason that I didn't go that route is because all of them look the same and I didn't want that. This method helps you avoid that uh, as well. We're going to use some parchment paper. For those that don't know, this is the parchment paper available at your grocery store, using it for baking cookies and such. Really easy to find. We're going to mix up some 50-50 green stuff, just like that. Put it between two pieces of the paper and we'll roll it out. Now you're going to want to roll this out pretty darn thin. Not paper thin, but fairly thin. Feathers, generally, when you apply them, tend to be stacked on top of each other. You layer them. And if your feathers are too thick, then they're not going to look good. They're really not going to look great. If you take a look at this project here, I had to be very careful not to roll them out too thick because it would have eventually gotten out of hand. Even that is a little bit, little bit thick in the middle, but not too bad, not too bad. That's, that's probably good. Now, we're going to let this cure for about 30 minutes, okay? About to the end of stage one, for those that have seen the green stuff working video. Let's just set this to the side, okay? And while that is curing, we're going to get a piece of aluminum foil. Now you can get this from a, a baking sheet as well. While you're picking up some parchment paper, get some baking aluminum trays. Um, you could probably cut it from a, a soda can as well, even though the soda can uh, aluminum tends to be a bit thicker and a little bit harder to work with. Cut yourself out uh, a strip about like that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to bend this into kind of a teardrop shape. Okay, here is one that I have already made and used. This is what we're going for. Okay, I've bent this piece, folded it over on itself, and then I have glued the tip here, and that makes a nice little feather shape. All right, if it helps you, you can get a tool to wrap this around like this. However, you can bend it. Go ahead and do that. If you cut it wider on this end and thinner on this end, you can actually cheat it and get two different sizes of feathers because this will fold in on itself bigger than this end. And then if you want to alternate sizes of feathers, you just flip your tool around. Pretty easy. Okay. I have got this round needle tool placed right here, and then I'm pinching the aluminum around on the other side. See how easy that is? With this method, you could make a hundred of these and have tons of different sizes and shapes of feathers, right? Now, pinch it kind of like a taco. You know, you can glue it closed. I like to get my tweezers come in here and kind of rough the edges just a little bit, just so it's not a perfect teardrop shape. All right. Now what we're going to do is get a little bit of glue on a old, dull knife blade. Just like that. And I'm going to carefully get my knife tip in here. Run it like that. Don't get any glue on the outside because what we're going to do is pinch that closed with our tweezers. Alright, now just let that dry. Now if you have glued this and you find that one side is a little bit longer than the other, just get your scissors and snip that little extra off. Not a big deal, because you want this to sit pretty darn flush. Now I'll need to glue this, this closed again, but no big deal. Just keep your, hand, your scissors handy so you can trim this if you need to. Another alternative, if you live in the apocalyptic wasteland of uh, Nevada, like I do, or somewhere else, you can always go out into the desert and collect spent uh, shell casings. Just this brass is very, very soft. I use these casings to make all sorts of different tools 
with my Dremel. These are very useful as well. So if, uh, if that's uh, an option for you, these make for great tools. So I've got a couple of different uh, sizes and shapes here. And I can just use all of these on one piece of green stuff and make a ton of different shapes and sizes alongside of my little aluminum rolled tool here. So those are some ideas for tools. If you are having trouble keeping the ends of your aluminum closed, you can also try a little bit of UV resin. If you've seen this used in our other videos, it's pretty helpful. Just spread a little bit on there, hit that with the UV, and that will tighten that up. And make it a little bit buried like that. That tends to hold pretty well while you modify your, your tool. This has been curing now for about half an hour. We're going to peel that top off, and we're going to take a little bit of mineral oil. You can get that at the grocery store as well, so making you a shopping list. Those that have been around here a while know we use mineral oil in every video. It's great to have. Now this time... We're not going to be too careful with the oil. Normally we're a bit more careful than this, but we're just going to spread this over our green stuff. And what this is going to help do is keep the green stuff from sticking to our tools. The other reason we, we waited until 30 minutes for this to cure is because we don't want it to be too, too sticky, right? Now, let's get our tool. Let's zoom in. And we're going to put a little bit of oil on our tool as well just dip this in the in the oil i like to still hold the ends of the green stuff just so it doesn't stick and peel off just like this okay and just start stamping in some feathers just like that okay if you need the space you can also flip it over like this so that uh, you're staggering them upside down, back and forth, and that saves on a little bit of room, if you need the space. But just make a couple of different tools, and then go along here, and there we go. So, the oil helps to keep the tools from sticking. And we've got a bunch of different shapes in there from making a bunch of different tools. And once we've got enough shapes stamped out, we're happy with that. Let's get our needle again, or you can get the back, the spine right here of a knife, if you prefer, whichever. And we're just gonna draw our lines. Now for these bigger ones, you could do two lines down the middle, like this, to make it look like there's a center stem. If you're that particular about it. Oops, kinda messed that one up. You could do a center center line like that, right? Or you could just draw one line, it doesn't matter. I like to actually draw out my line past the end of the feather so that it stretches it, makes it look nice and pointy. And then you're gonna come to the side and you're going to start making some diagonal lines like this back and forth and stretch it past the outside of the stamp so that it makes it look like the feathers are stretching out okay nice and simple and you can also do leaves the same way you know if you want to make a diorama with a bunch of leaves yeah, pretty much it's how you paint them is how people differentiate them at a smaller scale at a larger scale you may want to pay attention to the details to differentiate them but at small scale, you know, it's pretty much the same method to make leaves, more or less. For the smaller ones, I'll just take my knife and gently draw some lines as well. And for the really small ones, you don't really need to be too detailed. You detail it as you want.
make sure you put some variation in each one, you know, make it unique. You can do some lines here, leave a space, do some lines here, just make it asymmetrical, right? Sometimes that looks better if it's asymmetrical. And then just let this cure. Once you're good with all your lines, just let it cure. And once it's cured, we're going to put a little bit of hand sanitizer on it. Get some oil and water, essentially, so that we can dissolve the oil. Because we're going to start cutting these out, and we don't want a bunch of oil on it so that it's real slippery. You can use the light to see where the oil is and mop all that up. There we go. Once we're all dry, we will cut out our shapes. And you can also, at this point, vary your shapes. So if you wanted to, I don't know, take a little, little cut out of here and make it look like Feather has some more interesting texture, you definitely can do that. So there's one example. Now, of course, we did this out of green stuff, but you can also add a little bit of milliput to your green stuff while you're mixing it up. This will make green put, right? Now, green put, or milliput and green stuff, dries a lot stiffer, a lot more brittle, which means that if you're doing a lot of these feathers, you can actually just crack them out of the material like that, and it's very, very fast. This is really nice if you're going to do outstretched wings or maybe you're going to set up these feathers in a situation where they don't need to flex or bend. However, if you're going to be wrapping feathers around a character like this, I found that using green stuff is a bit more effective because the green stuff can flex and be flattened down in certain ways to make your layering a little bit more convincing. It's also a lot tougher. If you use a lot of the milliput um, feathers, they can, if they're hanging out and just uh, get bumped, well, they can crack off and, and break too easily. Whereas with a pure green stuff one, all it's going to do is just bend, and uh, that flexibility is going to keep it from breaking. So keep that in mind. So there you go, super fast tutorial. You guys don't need to spend a whole lot of money on this, really. Just a little bit of aluminum, maybe some parchment paper if you don't have some from other projects yet. And you can make your own tools. It's not, it's not going to be expensive. With the release of Chaos uh, coming up, this will be really useful for the Zinch guys. Uh, it's useful for Dark Angels um, and any of the, any of the beasts and, and monsters out there that you're going to be building definitely can benefit from some uh, realistic feathers and they really don't take that long to do so hope that was helpful for you guys if you liked this go ahead and uh, join us on patreon where we have full length really long tutorials covering all sorts of things like fire and hair and armor uh, and you also get access to the discord where you get to hang out with cool people that are like-minded so check us out at patreon.com slash lastlightcreative if you'd like to follow us on instagram you can see more of this stuff if you'd like to contact me for commissions, that is uh, lastlightcreative at gmail.com. To all the patrons out there that are watching this, you are awesome. There is going to be lots more videos coming soon. Thanks so much.